live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, and we planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we come to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 143 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technologies, the services, and the products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And how we're addressing this century as we have what's called paving the way to 2050, we're also looking at the people that are making a difference and how we can actually design and enhance the globe so that we're actually bringing a higher quality of life to people instead of just making do as we go to nine billion souls, nine billion souls on this planet by 2050. And we have a young man uh, sitting beside me who's been doing this for about 30 plus years, a uh, very dynamic individual, and uh, we're going to introduce you to uh, Edward M. Johnson. He actually goes by Eddie, so I'm going to use that if you don't mind, dear viewers. Uh, he's an architect, a landscape architect, and also an interior designer, and a number of other things, which we'll talk about uh, throughout the programs. And he has Edward M. Johnson and Associates, uh, which are an architectural firm in Washington, D.C. Eddie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here today. My pleasure. And uh, give us a little bit of the history of your firm, the uh, Edward M. Johnson and Associates, and then we're going to get into the uniqueness of what you're doing and how we're addressing wellness and health through interior design and all the other features that you offer. Well, I, I've developed skills over time, part of which are academic, part of professional. I'm also an urban planner with a master's in urban planning. My firm, Edward M. Johnson & Associates, uh, as you mentioned, has been around for over 35 years, providing services in urban and transportation planning, architecture, landscape architecture, interior de design, space planning, and construction. You're making me tired. Uh, and, fine, and fine art. <laughs> now, You're making I, me I, tired I, and uh, listening to this whole litany. How did, how did this journey begin? Well, uh, when I was in high school, I ran half mile. I stumbled, had a freak accident, chipped a piece of bone in my right knee, had major surgery. Uh, shortly after going back to school, I injured the same knee again, wound up before the same surgeon who said surgery again. I said, no, he said arthritis in 20 years. I said, okay, fine, I'll take it. And I did. I met a young lady who, uh, in Baltimore, a minister who gave me some advice about natural herbs to help me with this serious arthritis, and I took it. And within uh, less than two weeks, the arthritis was gone. Hold on just a minute there, Eddie. Let's uh, bring up one of these uh, first slides we have here about some of the things that uh, Eddie Johnson is doing. Because what we're really about here, Eddie, is talking about design, looking at architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design, but really from the standpoint of wellness and health. And most people don't think about architects, wellness, and health in the same breath, but yet you're actually combining this together in your practice. Absolutely. Once I became renewed as a result of the, the, the arthritis leaving my body, I began to focus more at that time on nutritional healing. And over time, as I read about healing and architecture, articles written, books written by architects, by folks in the medical profession, in the educational profession, I began to realize that God gave us everything, the, the, the fruits of the field, the birds of the air, the animals of the, of the field, and the fish of the sea, and all of the minerals that were essential for, for improving our environment. The minerals that allowed us to produce steel and concrete and, 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 and aluminum and so forth. And as a result of all of that, with technology, with advancements in technology and advancements in science, advancements in medicine, we were able to create, uh, in the architectural profession, lead, leadership in energy and environmental design, which ad address sustainability and efficiency of buildings and sites. But at the same time, we were experiencing some serious difficulties with health. As a matter of fact, our health is in serious problem, problem and a serious pro problematic state across the country. Well, I know, uh, and, Daddy, looking at this, uh, and this is one of the slides that you've shared with us, and looking at this balance of color and light, and this is some of the, uh, the essence because we're talking about 
and we'll go through all these, but you know, music and plants and all that. But color and light, how does that really affect us as far as our physical, mental, and emotional well-being as employees or citizens within a community? Well, let me mention, <coughs> excuse me, by 2018, we anticipate 43% of the population experiencing obesity and high blood pressure. So we're in real trouble. This could escalate to a cost of $344 billion to our population. So when we talk about color and light, color is very soothing to the soul. So is light. Natural light is very soothing, which is why it's so important to spend time outside. When we create buildings, we need to look more at creating buildings that have larger window openings, not just fixed glass, but windows that, that are operable, that provide natural ventilation. And, and also we need to look at adding more color. For example, blue is America's favorite color. Why? It's the sky. It's, it's all around us. It's a reflection in water, which, which appears to be blue. And so <clears throat> the more we begin to, <coughs> excuse me, the more we begin to focus on utilization for, of more accent colors and uh, more natural features in the built environment, the more we reduce stress, the more we produce calming, the more we impact uh, the state of, of the consciousness of all human beings across the planet. Well, looking at this uh, building here, this is a very old uh, building in Washington, D.C., yet what you're doing is taking something that's very classical as far as its design, but you retrofitted this so it's very modern as we're moving through the 21st century and incorporating the uh, color and natural light. I'm going to advance to this uh, next slide because this is something that's a little more contemporary, but yet right. even with the design, you're still incorporating these basic elements that you feel like is needed for the mental, the physical, and emotional well-being right. of people, not just working there, but also in the community. Right. What, what we've done here is to dedicate about 30% 30, 30 of the facade to natural light. And as that is accomplished on buildings, diversity across the nation, across the world for that matter, we bring in more natural light. You you're improve wellness. You improve the state of folks' consciousness which improves their ability to produce, to be productive, whether it's in, in this instance, a, a bank branch that we design, or whether it's in a school setting. The fact is, when we bring in more, night, more natural light, especially more natural light that allows the occupants to view nature, that is very calming, reduces stress. Stress is producing, high, producing heart attacks and strokes, and it's skyrocketing everywhere. Well, looking at uh, this, where you're actually using an entire cityscape, you know, being one of the most iconic streets in, uh, in the entire globe, but it really, if you take the scale, it's still the same impact, right? Right. Here we're dealing with signage. Why is signage so important today? Signage not only provides directions and information, signage has a major impact on our lives. For example, recently I was opening the door to a drugstore, a very heavy uh, steel door, and a lady approached, and I held the door open for her to come in, but the, si the signs on the door said, do not enter. She wouldn't walk through, and I found that amazing. But think about it, even when we use, use these cones that people store in the back of their trucks the fa or cars, the fact that uh, we see them placed on the street, whether legally or otherwise, we see that as an image that says, don't park here. We're really controlled to some degree by signage across the planet. Well, looking at uh, also uh, going from the sole standpoint as far as signage is concerned and moving into rooftop gardens, we know there are many benefits, uh, Eddie, as far as designing the, uh, stopping the flow of massive runoff into the streams, uh, filtering water, uh, providing actually in uh, New York City, as you know, and some other major cities, some of the food production now is actually happening you know, 15, 20, 80 stories in the air. Absolutely, and it's making a difference. And planting on rooftops is essential because we are eliminating more of the natural landscape. And in doing, doing so, as you just mentioned, in order to provide appropriate drainage and not to lose all of that uh, rainfall, to plant on roofs where we're planting trees, for example, in the Washington area, we can support fig trees, apple trees, pear trees, peach trees, but you don't see much of that. We have an opportunity now to plant in the ground as well as on, on roofs these plant materials, not to mention the natural herbs, which are your sources of, of vitamins and minerals. Which is, goes right back into right. this whole theme of wellness and, and health that you have here. And looking at this uh, photograph that's uh, to the right, 
You can see a mixed use here as far as the natural plantings with the uh, trees and shrubs. But also if you look at those uh, elevated uh, plant beds there, we can actually use those either for ornamentals or for foodstuffs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need to do more of that since we're beginning to utilize more of the natural landscape. For well, one buildings. of the things that uh, in one of your seminars that I attended, I thought this was very interesting how you're saying is that we ought to have stairs on each side of the entranceways instead of putting them to the back of the building and it really opens up the building but it makes it more welcoming but there's other benefits from that as well. Well, we have become a civilization of comfort and convenience and if we want people to utilize stairs they need to be not placed in an isolated situation in buildings but need to be placed accessible to the front door. And in doing so, when we add color, potentially art, maybe even music, to a stairwell, you give the person or persons who are entering buildings the incentive to utilize stairs. Well, and That's also, why this too, is also too, I notice here, it's uh, overlit as far as a stel stairwell, so you have natural ice uh, uh, supplemented by artificial right. light, and it really just opens up the whole area and right. it makes it look much more warm and inviting. And just like with this, uh, this uh, grocery store that you have here, it's the same kind of phenomenon. Right. You give people the incentive to want to use them. And what's significant about this, this market, if we began as architects to design many markets, many health food markets, kiosks, even a vending machine near entrances to buildings, people are more likely to use them. And especially if we encourage the owners of these businesses to sell products that are healthy. Well, I think that's very important, and this goes into this whole debate about food deserts and the inner city and whether people actually have access to uh, natural fruits and health uh, foods and, and all that, and this is something that's very real. Absolutely, and very essential today because we're experiencing so many health problems. The incidence of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, arthritis, joint deterioration are all skyrocketing, so the fact that we plant more and the fact that we have the opportunity, whether it's on a roof or on the ground, to plant more, more herbs and vitamins and fruits and veggies that are sensitive to improving the quality of health, we can. Well, looking at this, we only have about uh, 30 seconds, well, actually about 20 seconds left. It went quickly, uh, Eddie. Yes, it did. What would you like to leave with our viewers uh, before we come back? We need to pay attention to what we eat. We need to exercise. We need to take the initiative to make life better by relating more, especially as architects, to what is essential to improving the quality of health. We just mentioned a few features that are, that are essential. All right, we're going to be out. Can. This is uh, Eddie Johnson of Eddie Johnson Associates. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Too many women get hit by their boyfriends and husbands. Too many women are pressured into having unprotected sex. Half of the people in the world living with AIDS are women. It doesn't have to be this way. Together, we can change this reality. Let's strive for a world free of violence. At Volunteers of America, we don't just give kids a way to stay off the streets. We give them the tools they need to reach their full potential. We don't just help the elderly receive needed care. We help them live life to the fullest. We don't just provide food for homeless individuals and families. We provide job training and placement so they can buy groceries. Volunteers of America is a national organization that for over 100 years has provided programs and services that allow people to overcome their challenges to become vital members of their community. At Volunteers of America, we don't just help people, we help people help themselves. Find out how you can support the programs that are working in your community. Contact Volunteers of America today. Call 1-800-899-0089. Drivers face all kinds of distractions. Guys, 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 stop, stop playing, no? Before your wireless phone becomes one of them, stop. Drive safely. Keep your phone in easy reach and dial sensibly. In bad weather or traffic, call later and use a hands-free device. Remember, with wireless, safety is your call.
we're back to the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we look around the globe in 143 different nations coming to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States, looking and working with these nations to identify what we call the thousand best practices, the technologies, the services, and the products that are helping to increase the quality of life for the seven billion souls we currently have and the nine billion souls we may have by 2050. So as we look at this issue of paving the way to 2050, how are we going to address future Earth, which is really the essence of the theme, and how are we incorporating the people, the technologies, and the concepts that can actually enhance the quality of life and improve the standard of living for all citizens as they come here as being members of the globe. We have a gentleman that's been at this now for uh, over 30 years. His name is uh, Edward M. Johnson. He is an architect, landscape architect, interior designer, urban planner, and a number of other things. Uh, he'll go into some of those things. And he has his own firms, Edward M. Johnson Associates in Washington, D.C. Goes by the name of Eddie. Eddie, welcome. Thank you. Thank glad you very to much. Have, glad yeah. to have you with us. And My pleasure. In this segment, we're going to be talking about landscape architect. But uh, for the viewers who are just tuning in, give us a quick history as far as your own firm. And then we're going to talk about landscape architect and how that impacts. And we're really talking about wellness and health as far as the design is concerned. We created a firm that provides services in architecture, landscape architecture, urban planning, interior design, and graphics, and construction manage management with the idea over time we'd be able to provide comprehensive services under one roof and have a variety of clients, food markets, bank branches, housing, some university work, some municipal work. And we have been able to provide services for a variety of of clients in the, in the metropolitan area and uh, including the U.S. Department of Transportation. Well, and also you're doing it around the United States and, and internationally as well, which is uh, quite impressive uh, right. coming out of this local area. But looking at landscape architecture, we've talked about your work as, as an architect in buildings and color and sound and plants and all those kinds of things. But how can landscape architecture address this whole notion of wellness in this balance of mind, body, and spirit? Well, a simplistic uh, statement is to preserve more of the natural landscape. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the features of Feng Shui is to develop landscape and building projects in harmony with the la natural landscape. So as we build more projects, we need to plant more trees and plants because they, the trees remove the carbon monoxide from the air and provide more oxygen to move parking lots away from buildings to encourage people to walk. They exercise and that's beneficial to health. Those are just a few features that are essential. Well, you know, looking at the notion as far as landscape architecture is concerned, uh, many times we'll go out and see, you know, open pasture. This is in, in green, greenfield types of projects. Uh, lots of trees, uh, rolling brooks, all these kinds of things. You come back in uh, a month, it's just nothing but dirt. Everything has been either uh, taken down, hauled off, scraped. How can we start incorporating the natural terrain as well as the native plants that are there to make them part of a uh, new design and a new setting that's going in with uh, buildings and people? We need to interface more with clients and with universities and government to encourage our clients to incorporate more natural landscape features in the environment because we only have so much land. And once we eliminate a lot uh, more and more of the land area and create building masses and concrete masses for parking surfaces and pedestrian surfaces, we create a drain on our natural water resources. For example, right here in Washington, D.C., during the inclement weather over the summer, we've had flooding several times. That becomes a major issue, not, not only here in D.C., but it's a major issue across, across the world. The more we preserve the natural landscape, the more we're able to absorb a lot of the water, the water from the sky. Well, and also that yeah. goes to the quality, and not just water quality, but also the soil and air quality. Right. But looking at allergies, this is one of the things that many people instantly notice when you have the change of the season. Right. Uh, many people suffer uh, in many ways unnecessarily because 
of uh, not really having this balance of the nature and the buildings that they're using, how do we address this as far as allergies are concerned? Well, thank God for the computer because it provides a great deal of information quickly. Architects, landscape architects need to pay more attention to plant material that produces allergies. For example, oaks, silver maples, Arizona cy cypresses, pecan trees produce, produce a, a number of, of, of allergies. And it's very easy to simply go into your resource guide to identify trees based on region or area of the country, area of the world to identify sources. And getting back to this whole thing, looking at this, now we're saying, geez, there's really uh, virtually no plant uh, material in here. But I know in your design areas, you try to have plant materials completely surrounding these kinds Absolutely. of areas, but you're incorporating a number of elements here. Talk about some of these elements we're looking at. Well, this is, this is kind of, t this is typical of a lot of the playgrounds in, associated with schools, not only in the District of Columbia, but around the country. So what do we need to do to get these kids to utilize this? This is the middle of the day, a couple of shots of the same area were done at the end of the day. Kids aren't using it. Why? It's too hot in the summer, so we're creating this heat island effect. We have no trees, we have no shade, we have no benches, so they're not the kind of features included to give kids and parents or, or others an incentive to want to utilize these areas. So plant material, better lighting is essential to encourage children to utilize playgrounds. Well, we're going to show them uh, how it should be done. So looking at this balance as far as the, uh, the plant, shade, uh, color, uh, and the general landscape, how are, you, how are we bringing balance to all of this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we need to create landscapes in harmony with the natural landscape. So here you have a parking lot that is set adjacent to a landscaped area on the left. And behind it, you've got a series of trees. So we're cleansing the air, and we're providing shading. We're reducing the heat island effect. The parking surface on the right is set on concrete perforated paper. So we're creating a lot of natural drainage. And we need to convince clients more and more of the health benefits and the benefits of, to the environment of utilizing more perforated pavers as opposed to concrete and asphalt for paving surfaces. Well, looking at this, and I will stay on this for just a few minutes, Eddie, if you uh, give me that indulgence, because I think this is really instructive. Not only do you have the pavers and you're actually filtering out the water, which is adding to the uh, air and uh, soil quality, but also with the amount of shade there, you're actually uh, bringing a higher quality of life for people. And as I've traveled in 79 countries abroad, Many places there's virtually no green and there's no way to really have shade until the end of the day when you're in the shade of buildings. So looking at these, how can you actually bring this canopy and maybe describe what a canopy is into this kind of uh, urban environment? Well, if, we, if we, we as designers initiate more efforts to interface with government to increase the required plant materials and trees in public spaces, we'll get more. Now. It's not going to happen, even if we plant tomorrow, most trees are 10, 12 feet tall. Over time, you get your shading. And the canopy is, occurs when trees are placed across from each other. Over time, they, as the limbs continue to grow, they will connect. So you create the, the, the image and the form of a canopy, which provides a great deal of shading, and it gives incentives to utilize space. Well, this is something where you actually have a new development, but actually you're incorporating some of the very essence of the designs you have with the more canopy, large-scale trees behind this, but actually you're putting in the plantings that people need to begin the essence of cleansing the air right. and the, the soil and the water in this area. Now, now, this particular shot is not one of my projects. However, we felt it was very relevant to our presentation, the fact that, that uh, when this landscape area was created, landscape elements were pr provided directly in front of both uh, sets of buildings and a landscape feature was provided down the center so you've got a great courtyard and over time this will probably produce a canopy well and this is very important yeah. to uh, have these uh, the essence on this looking at bicycling we know that uh, washington dc is now the the cycling capital of the united states one of the leaders in the world uh, yet there are still some things that we need to consider as far as this juxtaposition of bicycles and automobiles. Already there's you know, some conflicts brewing there and so landscape architects and designers and urban planners like you are actually looking into the future as we have more and more bicycles, more and more cars. 
How do we balance these out? Well, a, a simplistic uh, approach is to create a, a more significant definition between cars and bicyclists. For example, in the District of Columbia in a lot of cities, the bicycle lane is simply defined with a stripe on the street, which is not a, a very safe way to separate bicycles from vehicular traffic. Uh, in this particular slide, you have a separation by an, a landscape island, which provides uh, cleaner air and protection for the bicyclist. And the other thing, you, you uh, are, we are able to produce fewer cars, which have less of an impact on the roadway. And as a matter of fact, one of the things government can do to, to encourage and increase an incentive for individuals to ride bicycles more is to give them tax credits. That'll get folks riding bicycles more. Well, looking at this uh, scene, we're getting towards the end of this segment, so we want to move through and looking at the canopy, looking at shade, and, uh, and then just green areas in that. Homeowners, what do they need to think about when they're looking at whether they're in a very tightly uh, restricted area of an urban area, or they're out in the suburbs or rural areas? How do they want to have this balance? Well, when we have large tree canopies, which occur in older communities, because it takes 15, 20 years to develop this. But it takes vision on the part of the developers and the la landscape architects and architects to encourage their clients very early on in the process to plant. When you plant now with the ultimate goal and objective of, of achieving tree canopies, you'll get them. You're not going to have this kind of effect in a short period of time. But it it improves the camaraderie, it improves the shade, it reduces the heat island effect, it raises spirits, it raises the energy level in a community. Well, and I think what you see here in these uh, shots too is where you have this uh, very vibrant uh, colors and you have this uh, position again of nature and, and man-made materials. It's really important that we incorporate all this together. We only have about uh, 20 seconds. How would you like to uh, leave this with our uh, viewers as uh, they look at us from around the globe? In, in, in the natural landscape, provide more water features, provide more plant materials, especially edible plant materials, and plant materials that are essential for improving health. Put art in the public space, art that is interactive, so that uh, folks okay, can... Okay, and we're going to exit on that. Uh, Eddie, thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet. books at the library. There's more than just books at the library. Excuse me. There's more than just books at the library. de livres à la bibliothèque. Hello. You have a lot of great books here today. You know there's more than just books at the library. I know. There's more than just books at the library. I don't want to be hooked to a machine. I want all the medical treatment available to me. I wouldn't want my family to have to make this decision. My doctor knows what's best for me. An advanced directive is your life on your terms. Talk with your family. Decide what's right for you. Then put it in writing. Documenting my wishes today means my family won't have to make heart-wrenching decisions later. To learn more, visit www.putitinwriting.org. 1,200 American youth run away from their homes every day. The National Runaway Switchboard is here to help. 1-800-RUNAWAY. If you are a runaway, thinking about running away from home, or a parent or guardian concerned about issues facing your child, call us 24 hours a day. 1-800-RUNAWAY. In times of crisis, hope is just a phone call away. 1-800-RUNAWAY.
We're back to the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we come to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe for the thousand best practices that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. Best practices, the technologies, the services, and the products, and the people that are making a difference. And it's really the people that are driving it through the intellectual property, through creativity, and how do we combine all the natural resources that we have and the creativity of man-made resources that can bring about a quality of life as we move towards 2050. We have a gentleman that's uh, many years of experience in this. This is Edward M. Johnson, who is an architect, president of Edward M. Johnson & Associates in Washington, D.C. He's a landscape architect, architect, urban planner, uh, interior designer, and a number of other things. And uh, Eddie, as I call him, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here on the Emerald Planet. And looking at uh, all of these skills that you have, being you know architects, landscape architect, interior design and urban planning, you have all these skill sets, combining it together, talking about wellness and health. Why do this? Because they're all interrelated. And if we're going to improve the quality of our natural and built environment, we need to incorporate the features in all of the dis disciplines that I happen to have achieved over time. We need to have a comprehensive approach to making a difference with our environment. We are losing a lot of available land. We're losing some of our natural lakes and streams. So we need to focus more on preservation and sustainability because this improves the quality of health. Well, looking at this, uh, I know this is a uh, art creation here, but really this goes to the essence of uh, what you're doing as far as uh, natural fruits, uh, herbs, and uh, vegetables. And at the same time, you're using art, music, sound, light, all these things uh, with this in interior design as well as the exterior to bring about this mind-spirit-body balance. Absolutely. That's so important as we move through the 21st century Tell us a little bit about the essence of this, uh, this artwork. Well, what we're really depicting here is signage, signage about food. We are, we are products of repetition. And if we're going to improve the quality of health, we need to put issues in front, issues, photographs, and verbiage in front of the population to help them and to sensitize them to improving health. For example, can you imagine a graphic with an apple that says, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? And to have that frequently placed in the presence of people in public spaces and train stations and airports and, and bus stations. So uh, looking at this as far as the, uh, the signage, the color, uh, the balance that you have here, uh, this is something that I know that uh, is very near and dear. This color makes a difference as far as health, and we're really talking about wellness because it's a whole lot less expensive if people stay well, Eddie, than trying to cure them after they have some kind of illness or even a mental breakdown. Well, it, it's been documented that in hospital settings, for example, if color is added, for example, blue is very calming. A lot of color is added. It is very calming. As a matter of fact, we have color and more natural light, especially natural light looking out to green spaces. People heal much faster. So color is very important. And the type of color, the use of color, and the application, depending upon the space and, and its usage, can impact uh, performance. Well, looking at this, I'm going to throw this in, but I was at a uh, lecture recently uh, through the uh, University of uh, Mexico in the country of Mexico, and uh, they were talking about the use of color going back to the Mayans, the Aztecs, and uh, the Tolmecs and other designs. And blue was one of the favorite colors as part of royalty, but also it was just washed throughout the entire society. And it called Mayan blue, and it, it had the same benefits those days 2,000 years or so ago as it is going into the 21st century. Well, people don't realize that we see blue every day when you walk out and look at the sky. It has a tremendous impact on us, plus the fact that when blue reflects on clear water, it looks blue. So we are affected by that color because it is part of the natural environment. 
Well, I'm going to, since you're an interior designer, we have a number of these uh, color slides here. And what I'm going to do is just go through and you just talk about what we're looking at here and the impact and the effect on people's health. Again, the mind, the body, and the spirit. Yeah. Well, we all generate energy. As a matter of fact, when you make a phone call to a friend who says, oh, I was just thinking about you, you'd already sent them your energy. One of the major features of feng shui, which uh, addresses placement, the art of placement, it's more than that. It's developing in harmony with the built environment and the natural environment. So that when we are sensitive to the kinds of features that, would, for example, this purple that's shown in this slide, addresses royalty. That is universally accepted throughout the world. Purple is a royal color. And, and uh, also very calming to the spirit, lavender is purple. Lavender is very calming. It's a natural herb. It's a scent. So when we talk about scents in interior spaces, we also address lighting in interior spaces and the type of lighting uh, has a tremendous impact, whether it's ambient lighting and ceilings or task lighting, which helps you to read, or focal lighting, uh, which focuses on art or, or decorative lighting. All of this has an impact on human performance and human interaction. Well, looking at uh, the pinks, the purples, the various shades that you have, uh, it's interesting how in all of this, it's uh, the, the style, the design, uh, but also light is a very important essence of all this. And understand you incorporate actually even music as part of the interior design that you have. Absol absolutely. It affects, uh, it affects performance. It, it affects the state of mind. It affects calmness. Uh, soft music in, in uh, medical facilities, soft music in the workplace, it affects how you feel. Even putting soft music around animals can help in a con to, to calm animals. Loud uh, music with a lot of uh, drums, etc., is very exciting. That's appropriate in an appropriate, lively setting. But in a setting of the workplace, uh, religious space, hospital space, medical space, you want music that is soft, that is soothing to the mind, soothing to the soul. Well, this is going to be the exact opposite. Looking at this yellow with all the, uh, the, the dots and uh, the various abstract uh, designs, and I know this is high energy as far as someone's living space, but how do we take and incorporate this into everything that we're doing, what's around us? Because I know that in your balance, there are times when it needs to be calming, other times when you actually want people to be, feel visibly and uh, be very excited about what they're doing. Absolutely. So we should consider the application of color based upon the scope of work associated with a particular building type. In a church sanctuary, you want to be sensitive to certain subtle colors. In a restaurant, red is, red is a very ideal color. You want people to develop emotional uh, states of mind to spend more money buying food and beverages. And so color has a tremendous impact on us. And we need to apply color depending upon its particular use and the end users. Well, looking at this, this is very subtle. You have uh, the outlying areas are more uh, calm and dark, but yet you have this uh, light well right in the middle of all this. So it's just like everything is actually moving into the light. Right. So how do you yeah. balance and, and how do you create this type of effect uh, for the organization, the company, so it actually does have the desired results? Well, this is a health facility in Baltimore where we provided a very, very large uh, natural light source through a skylight in the center of the, the uh, lobby. And in addition to that, it's basically beige, yellow beige, and an accent with natural woods which again goes back to nature, wood. And the floor is done in marble. Again, stone, going back to nature. So what we've, attempt, what we've done is really utilized a lot of natural products and brought in natural light. And natural light, again, is very calming, very uplifting to the spirit. And at a time, especially when stress is producing heart attacks and strokes everywhere. So when we can identify, by the way, we also use plants in this, in this space. When we can utilize more and more natural ma materials, it helps to calm. It helps to generate peace of mind, even in a stressful workspace. Well, I think uh, looking at this and you look at the lights and the way you've actually have these uh, four little patterns on the floor, all this is actually drawing people in. So let's say you're, you're working in a bank, you're working in a, a large uh, corporation. How can you use light to, in order to really just lead people to uh, where they need to be and give them of a, a mind, a spirit, so they're going to respond in a very favorable way? 
Well, we don't always have available to us a single story building where you can provide a skylight above or two story. So what we need to do is to focus more on providing natural light from the exterior. And if we have exterior walls that allows us to transition to interior light sources by providing glass that carries you to the next space, it brings more natural light in to adjacent spaces. That's a huge plus. And the other thing is to bring more plant materials, more green plants in buildings. Why? Again, they take uh, formaldehyde out of the air from furniture and carpets, etc., and benzene out of the air from cleaning materials, and they provide a lot of natural beauty. Well, I know one of the things you've talked about uh, uh, continuously is this whole thing of signage and the importance of signage on uh, humans and getting them to respond in a very positive right. way. Signage is, is absolutely essential today because signage has such a controlling impact on our mind. It doesn't just give directions and, and uh, information. It is really controlling us. Stop, go, right turn. And so here we have an opportunity to really use signage to provide information that improves the quality of health. And the more we create, for example, artistic signage with images of plants, images of vegetables, Im images of fruits with accompanying verbiage like an apple a day keeps the doctor away, it's going to have a more positive effect on encouraging us to, to eat better. Well, I know we are just about out of time, but I really like the graphics here, particularly, particularly with the, uh, the restrooms and you've got the silhouette of the, uh, the man and female. This is quite different than normally what you see. Well, we're, we're beginning to see more and more symbolic images that are closer aligned to what we do. So again, sign, signage is providing direction and very detailed information. And this is the whole essence, I believe, of uh, inside is outside and outside is inside. A absolutely. No boundaries. Absolutely. So here we have a water, <coughs> excuse me, a water feature to the left with a gas fireplace right below the water feature. Water feature above the fireplace to the right and the fireplace burning at the same time. And the, the symbolism here is we have an opportunity to create water features inside a building, whether it's a, a wall of water, whether it's a fountain on a tabletop. We have an affinity to water. We came in this, in this world through the mother's water and therefore water is very preci precious to us. Uh, we only have about uh, 15 seconds. What would you like to leave? Include in landscape projects more natural features, more plants, more art, more information about healing, and improved lighting and, and sound. Well, thank you for being with us as we look around the globe as we work to create the Emerald Planet. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years, Por más de 35 años, the Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer, para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana. Would you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, you might not know the half of it.
We're back to the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we look around the globe in 143 different nations looking for those technologies, the services, and the products that are making a difference for the seven billion souls on this planet. As we come to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States, you know weekly we're exploring all the various green themes that are bringing a higher quality of life as we look around the globe. And in these 143 countries, we're looking for ways that we can actually share these technologies, the services, and the products so that people not only will know about them, but actually have access to them. So we've created the Emerald Mall that will be bringing these and allow you to have access to those, as well as the people that are making the difference. And we have one of those outstanding individuals sitting right beside me here in the uh, studio in Washington, D.C., uh, Edward M. Johnson, who is a uh, architect, a landscape architect, interior designer, urban planner, and if I go further, I'll run out of breath, and he has his own firm, Edward M. Uh, Johnson & Associates. And Eddie, as I call you, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Now, this is My kind pleasure. of a recap, and uh, we're going to go over some of the, the main ideas we've talked about. We have this uh, first slide up here as far as closing vision, and I want to change that. And I think you ought to really change the slide to say this is an opening vision as far as the world is concerned. Tell us about this opening vision and how we incorporate the nature, man-made materials in order to bring a, a better quality of life as we really do move towards 2050. We have enormous resources available to us with technology, with science, and with medicine. We have the natural environment which is transformed once we create a, a landscape project or a building related project we need to be more sensitive to the landscape. We need to provide more plant material. As a matter of fact, in order to, to respond and to be sensitive to nature, to water, to air, to light, to art, to all of these features, we need to collectively begin to focus on some of the kind of issues that I brought up uh, last week before the American Institute of Architects. We need to create a set of guidelines that architects can adopt around the country and around the world. Well, this is the whole thing, Eddie, I think that uh, we've talked about over the years that I've known you, how you really have to have every segment of society involved, the citizens in the community, uh, elected officials, whether it's local, state, or federal, or whatever level they would be, and then also the professions to actually address these issues as we're moving forward. How do we bring this about where we're incorporating all the man-made and natural materials, but also the human energy and ingenuity into this? How do we really foster that? Well, when I presented before the American Institute of Ar Architects last week, I prepared a set of guidelines that were disseminated to the architects and interior designers, landscape architects present. What I've also suggested was the American Institute of Architects needs to take a position to begin lobbying government. Lobbying government to require more sustainability with the natural landscape. For example, zoning only requires that a minimal amount of land be retained, natural earth be retained to provide plant materials and trees. That needs to be increased. Uh, building codes don't address the fact that we need to provide more art in the public space. We need to provide more color on the exterior buildings. We need to provide better lighting. We need to provide plant materials on roofs that address more nutritional elements just as opposed to, rather, as opposed to plant materials that provide screening and canopies. Well, looking at this list that we have here, and I like to have a, a full set of the slide here, we're doing this balance because, you know, air, soil, and water is something that we think about naturally as far as the environment is concerned and we need to protect. But if you look at just nature itself, art, the uh, movement, uh, music, sound, all these things that really are part of we as human beings, what we're all about, how we really evolved as humans on the planet, how we brought about a better quality of life. And so as we're moving forward, we have almost two billion souls that are gonna be joining us on the planet within the next roughly 30 years. How are we gonna bring all this together so we're enhancing quality of life and not just saying, hey, we need to stop and we're gonna keep what we have 
and we're not going to move forward. Well, you know, as I mentioned before, if we're going to improve the natural environment, we need to incorporate features that have been developed by other architects, features that have been developed by my pre through my presentation to the American Institute of Architects recently. We need to lobby government. We need to lobby the, the universities. We need to lobby the insurance companies and the bankers who finance a lot of these projects. Well, we're saying the word lobby. We're really talking about educating Ed, people. Exactly. I mean, education right. is really the key. Lobbying is very expensive. Right. It really has uh, minimal impact. But education it is, is really the essence of what we're all about. Absolutely. And then we can incorporate every level of society in what we're doing. Because when we make the kind of changes that I've recommended, it will absolutely improve the quality of health. For example, ob obesity, uh, as I mentioned, is going to re reach 43% in America by year 2018 at a cost of $344 billion. It's going to undermine our economy. So yes, we need to educate people on the benefits of exercising, the benefits of eating better, the benefits of having certain features that we've already discussed, adding color, ad adding art, adding water features. Uh, parking away from sites, providing more natural landscaping to cleanse the air because we have a huge problem with air quality and lung issues and sinus issues arising produced by the, 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 amount, the number of vehicles on our public roads across the nation and across the world. Well looking at this and uh, the viewers were saying well uh, here's a, an architect, landscape architect, interior designer and he's talking about obesity, but uh, in your mind and the research and studies you've done, uh, Eddie, is that the fact is all these are really interrelated. And the more we bring people uh, into close proximity with air, with light, with nature, it's actually there's a cleansing process, but makes people to want more want to uh, emulate what we see in nature. Absolutely. The more we interface with people, the more we bring natural substances in buildings, not only outside. We are products of water, air, soil. We need to bring more of that and, and, and art in the public space and nature in the public space, which is more plant materials, more water features. And part of the educational process is to improve signage, as I mentioned earlier. Part of the educational process is to provide food stores, should say, or mini market inside of a building near the entrance. Why? We're a population, world population, that has evolved based on convenience. And if we provide a mini market, a vending machine that has 100% juices as opposed to concentrates and water and, and nuts and a few other items that are healthy, people will buy them because they are convenient. And I've already applied some of the principles that I've discussed uh, with you this evening to several of our projects. And this is definitely going to make a difference. Well, looking at this uh, opportunity signage, I know this is one of the things, and again, uh, viewers were recapping some of the uh, major ideas and concepts that we've mm -hmm. talked about uh, throughout the program. But the opportunity signage really relates to directing people in a way that society would like for them to go. This is not brainwashing or uh, are trying to force people, but it's really, again, educating people as far as how they can have a better quality of life as we move forward. So again, it's a wellness philosophy. We're not dealing with how do you remediate illness. Right. As a matter of fact, when you consider signage, think about on these major public buildings, Times Square, downtown Washington, D.C., or Tokyo, or whatever. Not only images about products that are being sold, but to provide images that depict health. For example, birds flying, butterflies in the, in the air, to show features of waterfalls, features of of nature, features of flowers. These are very calming, and especially since during the course of the day we're, we're experiencing all kinds of stresses. Stresses from traffic, stresses from the workplace, stresses before we leave home and dealing with family. And so to, to move into the public space on a frequent basis, on a daily basis, and to have images that are very uplifting and very calming, that alone is going to be helpful to improve the quality of health. Well, looking at this, this is an uh, escalator and uh, going to the, uh, the metro system and also the fact of uh, trying to get people to move to stairs or to walk up and down the escalators, which I do, so it gives an opportunity to increase my, uh, add to my 10,000 steps for the day. I try to do each and every day of the week, but it's really important to allow people movement and allow them to exercise as they're going about their daily activities. Right. 
and to encourage them to do so. What's interesting about this metro stop, shot is that uh, one of the sections is not working. And for the 15, 20 minutes that I stood there, not one person would walk down the escalator. We need to encourage people to utilize steps more. And again, going back to color and art and music to give folks incentives to want to use it. This was uh, not a very attractive space. Well, looking at this, uh, the butterfly, I think this is absolutely fantastic. And putting in a plug for the Monarch Butterfly Program that uh, we're proud sponsors of uh, in uh, North America, Canada, the United States, and Mexico, I think this would be absolutely fabulous for the 20 plus schools in uh, Washington, D.C. They actually have these, as they call the landing pads for the Monarchs, to incorporate this as a feature. I couldn't agree more. And the more we, we step outside the box of our comfort zone to create more features that are typically not provided. For example, here's a piano that's used as a waterfall and is used to plant flowers. We must step, as designers, step out of the box of our comfort zone and begin to think way out about features that are practical, but yet innovative and satisfies a lot of the interest that we want to see occur in the, in the natural landscape. And so maybe not a piano, but some other form to create a water feature. Well, we're going to end up with this. Uh, we're almost out of time, Eddie, and it's just been absolutely fantastic having you. you. The uh, number of years that I've known you, you're very innovative. Uh, I just love the philosophy you have as far as this uh, mind, spirit, body uh, balance. And uh, we have about 30 seconds. Uh, share with us what we're looking at here, and then we're going to be exiting. Well, what we have here is a waterfall in a wall, and water features as fountains that can be set on a countertop to indicate that water features can be provided in a space as small as an apartment building, as small, I'm sorry, an apartment, spaces as small as a single room. Water is absolutely essential for life and flowing water is very calming to the spirit. We need to reduce the issues associated with uh, stress. We need to improve the quality of health. I'm challenging architects and designers everywhere. We need to step out of the box. We need to make a difference. We need to take the initiative to encourage clients, government, universities, etc., to make a difference, to support preservation of the environments, to support wholeness, to make a difference in our health. And thank you very much for being with us. We look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet.